in the last lecture we learned what is a generic in typescript now in this lecture let's try to create a generic function which can be used with any type of data let's go to vs code and in the last lecture we created this swap function where it is taking one generic parameter and it is taking two numeric parameters so for this generic parameter we can pass a value of any type this generic parameter will be an array when we are calling this swap function for the first time we are passing an array of numbers and when we are calling this swap function for the second time we are passing an array of strings so when we are passing an array of numbers this t will be number when we are passing an array of string this t will be string so to create a generic function what we do is after the name of the function we specify a placeholder for the data type so for specifying the placeholder we use opening and closing angle brackets and in there we specify a placeholder name generally we call it as t but if you want to have multiple placeholders for multiple data types we can use t u v etc but this is just a convention okay and then in the parameter list we specify which parameters will be generic parameters for example for this swap function we are taking three parameters out of these three parameters only the first parameter is going to be the generic parameter for other two parameters we have specified its data type explicitly okay and then we can also specify the return type of the function so the return type can also be generic in this case what i want is when we are passing an array of numbers to this first parameter in that case the return type should be array of numbers when we are passing array of string as the first parameter to this function in that case the return type should also be array of string okay so here let me go ahead and let me write the logic for swapping the elements and for that first we will check if index 1 if it is less than 0 that means if it is minus 1 minus 2 or something like that or if index 1 if it is greater than ar dot length okay so this index should be always 0 or greater than 0 and it should be less than the array length so here i also use greater than equal to okay and in this case we will throw an error for that we say throw new error and what error do we want to throw we'll say invalid index all right and same thing we also want to check for index 2 so index 2 should also be greater than or equal to 0 and it should be less than array length okay let me move this condition in a separate line so that it will be more readable all right so if index 1 is less than 0 or if it is greater than the array length then we are throwing this error or if index 2 is less than 0 or it is greater than array length then also we are going to throw this error otherwise we are going to swap the index values for that i'll say arr of index 1 arr of index 2 equals arr of index 2 comma arr of index 1 so here i am using array destructuring syntax so to this expression i am assigning the value of element at index 2 and to this expression i'm assigning the value of element at index one okay so in this way we are simply swapping the value of index one with index two and then we are going to return the arr because arrays are of reference type so it is going to modify the original array so let me go ahead and let me log it in the console for that i'll say console.log let's use the same thing for string array also if I save the changes, let's also refresh the page. And you'll see the array value is 1, 2, 3. And we wanted to swap the value of element at index 0 with the value of in element at index 2. So the new value is 3, 2, 1. So the value between 0 and 2 has been swapped here. Then in this case, for the second array, the elements were hello, hi, and how are you? And we wanted to swap the element at index 1 with the element at index 2. So here you can see the value is hello how are you and hi so the functionality is working as expected and here we are using generics so for this generic type first we are passing an array of numbers so this t will be number and second we are passing an array of string so here the t will be string 
Now let's take another example where we are going to use multiple generics. So here I'm going to create a function. Let's call this function maybe expand. Okay, you can call this function anything. Here this function is going to take two objects. I'll call it obj1 and it is going to be of type object and obj2 and this is also going to be of type object. Okay, and all we are going to do from this function is we are going to merge this object 1 with object 2. So, for example, let's say I'm calling this expand function. There, I'm passing an object with name, let's say John, and age, let's say 28. So, this is the first object. This will be assigned to obj1. And then I'm also passing a second object where I will have name, let's say John, and I'll have gender let's say male so what we want is this function should merge these two objects into a single object and there we should have name age and gender property so for that here i am going to say return and on the object we have a method called assign and to this method we can pass the objects which we want to merge here i want to merge object one with object 2 okay let's save the changes and here if i hover over this expand method you will see the return type for this function is also going to be an object right so when i'm calling this expand function let's say it is going to return me an object let's store that object in a variable let's call it maybe combined you can name it anything and on that combined i want to access let's say name property Okay, now when I'm trying to access this name property on this combined, you see we have an error. Now this error is because this combined, it is of type object. Okay, and we don't know on this object what properties we will have, whether we will have this name property or not. That we are not sure. That TypeScript is not sure. Okay, this object, it is very generic. So TypeScript does not know whether this object will have a name property or not. And that's why we have this error. Now, to solve this problem, all we have to do is we have to set a generic type for object 1 and object 2. So, to set the generic type, first of all, after the function name, as we learned, we need to use a set of angle brackets. And here, we want to have two generics because the object 1, it might be different from object 2. Both of them will not be same, right? So, we cannot use the same generic type for both the parameters here. So here I'm going to use two generic types, T and U. Let's say obj1 is going to be of type T and obj2 is going to be of type U. Okay. Now here you see we have an error and the error says, so for this assign method, we have four overloads. For the first overload, the target is an empty object and source can be any object from where we want to merge it. Okay, so here, when we are trying to use this assign method of this object, it is taking the first overload of this assign method where the object one, the target should be an empty object. But to that, we are assigning an object of type two. And that's why we have this error. Now, to solve this error, we need to use constraints. We need to tell TypeScript that this obj1, it is not an empty object. Instead, it is an object with some properties. So we need to tell TypeScript that this is an object. And for that, we might need to use constraints here. And what is constraint and how we can use constraint? We are going to talk about it in our next lecture. So in this lecture, we learned how we can create a generic function. For creating a generic function, after the function name, we use angle brackets and we specify what are the generics we are going to use for that function. And then we use those generics. For example, we are using this T and U for specifying the type of OBJ1 and OBJ2 because both of these objects will have different types. So for example, when we are calling this expand function, for this OBJ1, we are passing an object where we have name and age property. So this is one type. And for the OBJ2, we are passing another object where we have name and gender property. So this is another type. In this one, we don't have age property. And in the first object, we don't have gender property. So 
these two are different objects so that's why we are using two different placeholders two different generics for these two parameters and finally we want to merge them using this assign function okay now in the next lecture let's resolve this problem this constraint problem this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day